Hey everybody, happy Thursday. Now today's question is all about overcoming addiction to prescription medications. But before we jump into that, are you new to my channel? Welcome. I am a licensed therapist creating educational mental health videos and I release them on Mondays and on Thursdays. So make sure you're subscribed and have those notifications turned on so that you don't miss out. Now this week's question is, Katie, do you think you'd be able to do a video on addiction to prescription medications and how to overcome it? I can't see one on your channel, but you may have already covered it. I haven't, okay, so good call. I'm just really struggling with abusing pain meds and benzodiazepines and sleeping tablets, and I desperately want to stop. I feel like every time I'm reading about addiction online or even watching the news, I am bombarded by information about the opioid crisis, and that's probably because in the US alone, it is estimated that 54 million people have abused prescription drugs in their lifetime. That's a huge number of people using prescription medication recreationally. And that's why I decided to address this question. As always, I want to define some of the terms first to ensure that we are all on the same page. And first, let's define the term addiction. Now, addiction is the repeated involvement with a substance or activity, despite the substantial harm it now causes. Because that involvement was, and may continue to be, pleasurable and or valuable. In short, addiction is when we keep doing or using something regardless of how much it can negatively impact our lives and we can struggle to stop because we are emotionally or physically dependent on it. Next, I wanna talk a bit about prescription medication because in this question, the person names pain meds, benzodiazepines, and sleeping tablets. Now, painkillers usually fall into the opiate category meaning that they work with the opioid receptors in the brain to stop us from feeling any pain. And most commonly talked about versions of this would be Oxycontin and Percocet. And benzodiazepines can be prescribed to help treat anxiety, seizures or muscle spasms, and to help those going through alcohol withdrawal. These medications are things like Xanax or Valium. And finally, sleeping medications can be benzos or opioids but they can also be non-benzodiazepine hypnotics. A couple of medications that would fall into that category are Lunesta or Ambien. Not only are all these medications very easy to become addicted to, but they can enhance the high we get from the others. Meaning that if we used to get really high from taking some painkillers, over time we can build up a tolerance to that amount. But if we take those painkillers in conjunction with a benzo, we can get that same high we used to get when we first started abusing painkillers. Since both benzodiazepines and opioids are what I would call downers, meaning that they make you feel relaxed and sleepy, can be very, very dangerous to mix them because that's when overdose happens and people can die due to slowed breathing and heart rate. Pretty much it just slowly stops. Mix in sleeping medications and we are at an even higher risk for overdose. So if you find yourself abusing prescription medications, please know that help is out there and you can overcome this addiction. But let's jump into some ways to know if you're struggling with addiction because maybe just me talking about it, you're like, I, I think I'm fine. And first, I think it's really important to know that addiction is something that can affect anyone. It's not a certain type of person or people of a certain socioeconomic status. It can happen to anyone, especially when it comes to prescription medication addiction because it starts out as something we need in order to recover from a surgery or other medical issue and can turn into addiction without us even realizing it. Which leads me into our first sign, and that is if it continues to take more and more of the medication for us to feel the same effect, meaning we've built up a significant tolerance. And that's something to be aware of. And if you find that happening, because it's very common, that's something to speak to your doctor about immediately. See if there are other options, things that you can try so that you don't find yourself using more and more of it. Second, if you find any of your relationships suffering because of how the drug affects you, it's very common for addiction to affect how we interact with those around us, like being easily irritated or even not making time for those in our lives anymore. Or maybe we only make time for other people who struggle with the same addiction. Third, if we find ourselves doing whatever we need to in order to sustain this addiction. This could be lying to our doctors about how we're doing or putting ourselves in really dangerous situations in order to get the drug that we need or stealing money or 
even medication from other people in our lives, or lying to those we love about our situation and what's really going on. There could be a lot of things we do in order to get the drug that we're addicted to. Okay, now let's jump into the best steps to take in order to healthfully recover. And the first step is to be open and willing to work on it. I've talked about this a lot when it comes to eating disorder recovery, that we don't have to want to get better because that can take a while, but we just have to not like where we are. And based on this person's question, it sounds like we already have this first step taken care of. So that's really great. But just know if any of you are out there struggling with the same thing, this is the first thing we need to consider is willingness to change and the want to not be where we're at. Step two, build up your support system. This can be done in many ways. This could be friends and family and a treatment team or possibly just a treatment team. I know that when we've been in the throes of an addiction for a really long period of time, that can distance us from friends and family and it can be hard to get back in contact with them. If that's your experience, finding a treatment program or even just an outpatient treatment team, meaning you know your GP, like your regular doctor, a psychiatrist and a therapist, that's really the best next step. And I also wanna mention that there can be really terrible and dangerous withdrawal symptoms. So please do not try to do this on your own. There are even detox houses where all they do there is help you manage the withdrawal symptoms and ensure that you're medically okay during that process. So find whatever's available in your area and what your insurance covers and make that appointment. Step three you'll need to build up your healthy coping skills. And you knew this one was coming because we talk about this all the time. But in order to fight that urge to go back to using that drug again, we're gonna have to have things that we can do to process what we're feeling and why, as well as things that we can do just to distract us from those urges. And I have a video I did, I don't know, maybe six months ago. It's all about coping skills and it's called 25 Coping Skills. And I'll link that in the description. But if you aren't sure what a healthy coping skill is, here are a few ideas to get you started. And one coping skill that helps us process what we're feeling is an impulse log. All an impulse log really is, is a way to slow down our thought process so that we can acknowledge what we're feeling. And instead of acting impulsively, we can make a positive choice for our lives. And they usually ask you to write down what the impulse is. For example, I wanna use drugs. Then what happened that day to instigate the urge? Like I got into a fight with my best friend. And then it will ask you what you can do first before giving into this urge. And so, like I said, the whole goal of an impulse log is to slow the process down so that we don't just act out on that trigger or that thing that's happened. Instead, we understand what caused it, what, what created this urge, and then we can work on that. We can find ways to soothe. So we got in a fight with a friend. Okay, maybe I just need a journal about it. Maybe if I talk to that friend and apologize, I'll feel better. We can look for other ways to you know, overcome it, process it, or fix the situation instead of just reverting back to that old unhealthy coping skill of using drugs. Another type of coping skill is just a distraction, like going for a walk, cleaning your closet out, trying out a new workout, painting your nails. The list could go on and on and on. Really, this type of coping skill is just anything that keeps your hands and mind as busy as possible. And by doing that, it keeps us so occupied that we really can't engage with the unhealthy coping skill. And it's really important when you're coming up with all of these that you try them out and see which ones work for you because that can truly change from day to day and urge to urge. So try to make these lists as long as possible. And that's really why I did that video about 25 coping skills to try to help get those lists going. And fourth and finally, create a new social group. This can be the hardest thing for people to do. And to be honest, it's what usually leads to relapse. So please take this step very seriously. This is going to mean that we may have to let our old, not sober friends know that we can't be around them anymore, or possibly that we have to move out of an unhealthy living situation. It's gonna be hard, and we're gonna have to give ourselves the time we need to grieve the loss of those relationships. And you could do that, grief, that grieving work in therapy, or you can do it by journaling, 
But whatever you do, don't think that you can go back to being close with those people when they aren't sober or trying to recover like you. It's too triggering and honestly just way too difficult. Instead, we need to work to cultivate new relationships with those you meet at maybe NA, AA, or you know, you get a sponsor, or you could even reconnect with those that you may have lost touch with while you were using. Just make sure that you have a sober social group that can be there for you with real support and love while you work on your recovery. If you wanna read more about addiction to prescription medications, I will link some informational articles in the description down below as well. And I hope you found this information helpful. I know we haven't talked that much about addiction and recovering from it. So let me know in those comments if you have anything to add to this, or if you would like me to cover more topics like this in the future. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you next time. Bye.